Hi, good evening everyone and welcome to this evening's personal tax revision session. So tonight we're going to be looking at task three, which is about income from investments and property. In the first part of this task, it says that Michael receives interest from an ISA of £7,400 and interest from his building society account of £1,270. His other taxable non-savings income after deducting his personal allowance totaled £37,200 for 2023 to 24. He has no other source of income. First part, it says his total income from investments on which tax will be paid. So if we have a look at this, so firstly, we had interest from an ISA of £7,400. Now, any interest on an ISA would be exempt. So it would just be based on the interest from his building society account of £1,270. Now, because he is a higher rate taxpayer, he is entitled to a £500 savings allowance. So it would be the £1,270 minus the £500 savings allowance. So his total income from investments on which tax will be paid is £770. The next part, it says the total tax payable on this interest is. First of all, we've got to have a look at what his non-savings income was. So remember that non-savings income would always be taxed first. We can see it's given in the question as being £37,200. Therefore, he hasn't used all of his basic rate band. So we need to see how much of that basic rate band he has remaining. So 37,700 pound minus 37,200 pound leaves 500 pound remaining of that basic rate band. Remember though, that the savings allowance is 500 pound and that will be taxed at 0%. So we've now used up that full basic rate band. 770 will therefore be taxed at 40%, which gives us £308. Okay, moving on to part B. Sally receives dividends of £22,000. Her other taxable income totaled £156,900. £156,900, sorry, for 23-24. She's got no other source of income. We can see she's an additional rate um, payer. And then the first part of the task, it's saying her total income from investments on which tax will be paid. Remember that regardless of whether they are a basic rate payer, a higher rate tax payer or an additional tax rate payer like she is in this instance, everyone is entitled to the £1,000 dividends allowance. So therefore, her total income from investments that tax will be paid will be the £22,000 less the £1,000 dividend allowance. So £21,000. The total tax payable on this dividend. So this will be, remember you're given the rates within the reference material, so always look back at this we can see an additional rate payer for dividends is charged 39.35 percent sorry i lost my cursor now 
So the full 21,000 would be taxed at 39.35% and that gives us 8,264 pounds. Okay, so part C, Leroy receives interest from his building society account of £15,000. His other taxable non-savings income totaled 189000 for 23-24. He has no other source of income. And then it says the total tax payable on this interest is. So we can see that Leroy is an additional rate taxpayer therefore he isn't entitled to any um, savings allowance so the full £15,000 would be taxed at 45% so it would be the 15000 times 45% which gives 6000 six seven hundred and fifty pounds so next we've got a furnished house which um is being let out for 800 pound per calendar month in march 2024 she raises the rent to 880 pounds per calendar month the rent is paid on the first day of each month her expenditure for 2324 tax year was as follows. So you can see here that we've got a list of different expenses. And then for part D, it says to calculate the profit or loss made on the property for 2324 by inputting the correct figures in the boxes. Firstly, property income. So let's go back up to the task. So it was let out for £800 per calendar month in March 2024. And then, sorry, it was let out for £800 per calendar month. But then in March 2024, the rent is raised up to £880 per month. And the rent is paid on the 1st of every month. So that means that from the 1st of May... up to the 1st of February, they'd be paying um, £800 per month. So that is for 10 months. £8,000. Then from the 1st of March, so for the 1st of March and the 1st of April, so two months, the rent is £880. So that gives property income £9,760. And then we've got the expenses. So first of all, decorating. So decorating is an allowable expense. insurance so again insurance would be allowable water rates again water rates is allowable 300 pound
Next we've got the conservatory. Now the conservatory is capital. So therefore it isn't allowable. And then we've got washing machine because it's a replacement washing machine it is allowable and then lastly we've got the TV now the TV because it's new so it says new TV for the bedroom which previously they didn't have because it's not a replacement and it's a new item it's not allowable so property income 9760 less the allowable expenses should give us a profit of seven thousand two hundred and forty four pounds then looking at E the last part of the task it says David has a loss of fourteen thousand eight hundred pound from rental income in 2324 he has rental profits of six thousand pound in 2223 and is expecting £11,000 of rental profits in 24 25 and he has no other income. So complete the following sentence David can offset something of the loss in 22 23. So in, in 22 23 he's made a rental profit of £6,000 so therefore he can't offset any and add anything um in 22 23 then in 24 25 so in 20 so it says um so david has a loss of fourteen thousand eight hundred from rental income in 23 24 he has rental profits of six thousand pound in 22 23 and then he's expecting eleven thousand pound of rental profits in 24 25 so in 24 25 he could offset 11000 pounds of the loss remember that property losses they can't be carried back they can only be carried forwards so thank you for attending this evening's session and i hope to see you again soon